let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. The era of the Holy Spirit. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of truth, leader Olumba, Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, John, St. John chapter 14, verse 26. Second lesson, St. Luke chapter 21, verses 13 to 15. Golden text, St. Matthew chapter 10, verses 19 to 20. Quote, brethren, what you hear is the revelation of our lesson this night. The scriptures reveal that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. There are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. Who is he who goes with the water and the blood? If we have witness for the Father and the Son, know it now that we should witness for the Holy Spirit, because this is the era of the Holy Spirit. Even though He first existed and everything emanated from Him, but the world knew Him not. God is a Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God, and God is the Word. The Word is also the Spirit. Now is the time that we all should bear testimonies about the Holy Spirit throughout the world, because this is the end of time. Our Lord Jesus Christ bore eloquent testimony about the Holy Spirit. The greatest duty that could be performed by man is to bear witness to the Holy Spirit. From the beginning of the world, the Holy Spirit has always been the doer of all the work. But no person knows him or recognizes him. Neither has any person spoken about him. This is then the greatest and the most pleasing duty in the sight of God. Various persons have testified about the Father. Others have testified about the Son. But now is the time to witness for the Holy Spirit. It is not uncommon to find people testifying about the father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They also testify about the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. But at what particular time did people witness for the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit does not err. Who is the Father we talk about? He is the Holy Spirit. Who is the Son? He is also the Holy Spirit. We have heard that when Abraham went to buy corn, the Holy Spirit directed him to tell people that Sarah, who accompanied him, was his sister. Should the people ask him? You have also heard that the Holy Spirit directed Sarah to cast out the bondwoman with her son for the son of the born woman shall not be here with the son of the free woman. On this, on his return, Abraham discovered that Hagar and Ishmael were cast out. He became very furious as the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight. But he was told by the Holy Spirit that it was he who directed that they should be cast out. Because the son shall not bear here witness with his son Isaac. Only the Holy Spirit can be glorified. Since the world began, before the foundations of the world were laid, were laid, it has been the Holy Spirit who has been leading. He has been the Father, the Son, and now is the time for the manifestation of the glory of God publicly. This is the era of the Holy Spirit and the time of His glory. 
No other thing can be bestowed with the glory. Neither tree, nor rock, nor any other thing. Only the Holy Spirit is glorified. You have also heard that the Holy Spirit was upon Simeon, and he went by the Spirit into the temple during the, pre the presentation of our Lord Jesus Christ for blessing. After the name Demetrius, he was led by the Spirit to say, Our sword shall pierce through your own soul. It was the Holy Spirit which intimated to the people that John shall be that John shall go before him in the spirit of the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Brethren, know that the Holy Spirit is not new but what is difficult is for people to believe in him and know him that he is all and in all and that this is the time of his glory blessed are those who do not see yet they believe all of you confess to be thomas's that you cannot believe unless you see but luckily or unluckily for you who has ever seen, believed, and acknowledged the Holy Spirit? That was why our Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples, Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet they believe. The tendency to doubt is your worst problem in this kingdom. You are always guessing. You are always conjecture that certain things should appear as you think. It is impossible that your conjecture can be the truth. It is a figment of your imagination. The Trinity God. There is nothing that causes much confusion and trouble and break people's heart than mentioning the Holy Spirit. We are told that there is God three in one. The Father is one God out of the three. The Son is one God out of the tree, and the Holy Spirit is the complete God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit refer to as one God. This is the era of the Holy Spirit. There is nothing any person can do. Tell people that a certain thing is done by the Holy Spirit. He does one thing. He says one thing. He creates one thing. He does everything. Testify about him. The first duty was performed by the Father. The second was performed by the Son. But this last duty is performed by the Holy Spirit. It is the glory which goes round. You have taken your turn of the glory according to the conditions stipulated and commensurate with what you are. It is a form of constructive bargain, each taking his turn when his turn is due. Everyone has enjoyed the turn of his glory. This is the turn of the Holy Spirit. What you do lost by glorifying the Holy Spirit. The divine being is tripersonal. Do not forget what the Father referred to here is the Holy Spirit. He does everything. When it is mentioned that the Son has come, He is the same Holy Spirit doing everything. But He was duly named the Son. Even now that He is referred to as the Holy Spirit, He is still the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three are complete in one. He is no longer referred to as the Father. Neither is He referred to as the Son. But he is called the Holy Spirit. Your problem consists in that you do not know what to tell people. And you do also not know what you should testify about. Why I am enunciating this is that today marks 
the opening of our Pentecostal Assembly this month. And today is a day specifically set aside for the spirited children. This key note address containing pieces of advice, instructions and instructions form the opening ceremony of the Pentecostal. Our Lord Jesus Christ came and he was a spirit. The Holy Spirit. He, but he was referred to as the Son. You can have a father who, when he is alive, may be called Ocon or James or any other name. But when he reincarnates, you can give him another name in this same world. We should, therefore, not doubt the glorification of the Holy Spirit because this alone has given you food for thought. Do not develop any doubts in your minds about him because he is the life, he is the word spoken, he is power, he is health, wisdom and every other thing we, we today witness. This is the fullness of time and it is high time that the whole world bestowed unto him the highest glory because he is worthy of this glory. He is the greatest because he existed before the foundations of the world were laid. The world derived its, ex its existence from him. The heavens derived their existence from him. The earth, the winds, the rain, human beings, animals, fishes, birds and every other thing emanated from him is there any reason why you, we should not know him the testimony of our lord jesus christ is the spirit of prophecy the holy spirit we reveal to you is known by the various world's religions like mohammedanic like mohammedanism judaism buddhism hinduism these religions have definitely felt the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. He dwells in you as well as in the world. He dwells in every man. He speaks the word and, pra and practicalizes the word spoken. He is everything to every man. He is the teacher, the protector, a guardian, an advisor, and counselor. The Holy Spirit is not a, phenomen is not a phenomenon that should appear incognito or doubtful because he is God. He comes into play in every sphere of endeavor. God himself has scheduled time for everything under the sun. But the time in which we are from now to the end of the world is the epoch of the Holy Spirit. You are true witnesses to the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ did not testify about an angel, nor did he testify about a prophet, nor any other human being, but he bore eloquent testimony to the Holy Spirit. And the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Reading through the three texts, you realize that they are a resume of the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ about the Holy Spirit. The first lesson will now be read. First lesson, John chapter 14 verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. It is said, a laborer is worthy of his hire. Have you heard now? He bears witness of the Holy Spirit that when he shall come, he will teach you all things and brings to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He is the one who imparts all the knowledge in the world. How the world will be made good and habitable by all is firmly in his hands. All the things which have to be done properly and what has done in a wrong and 
inappropriate way and whatever will be rectified whatever wrongs will be righted all are in his hands whatsoever the world does not know he will teach the inhabitants of the world the factor for which Adam our father through ignorance derailed from the path of rectitude and by which action he has incurred the displeasure of God on us he will also teach us so that we may not also fall short of the expectation of God he will not only teach you but will lead you to the accurate wisdom of the truth with what would we buttress our argument for our failure to recognize him as our leader or to recognize him as our God? What reasons have you to advise why we should not recognize him as our Lord and Savior? For without him there is nothing made that was made. All things were made by him. But if you bring him into play in whatever you do, all is well with you. The Spirit quickens. Our Lord Jesus Christ had testified when he said, The flesh profits nothing but that it is the Spirit that quickens, and that the words we he spoke unto us, they are spirit and they are life. The everlasting life bestowed unto us consists in the Holy Spirit. The power bestowed on us is this self-same Spirit. The glory given to us is the self-same Holy Spirit. The wisdom of truth we have received is the same Holy Spirit. The love we preach always is the same Holy Spirit. The peace we yearn is brought about by the Holy Spirit. This the unity we long for is brought about by Him. It is the self-same Spirit which has united the whole world into an indivisible whole. The duty of changing and reforming a man from the path of iniquity into the way of rectitude is that of the Holy Spirit. The work of healing ailments and infirmities, taking away our problems, Sickness, difficulties, and anxieties is that of the Holy Spirit. He prays and makes intercession for us. We offer, we offer prayers. Is it not the Holy Spirit who prays? When we are caught red-handed or arrested in incriminating circumstances, who is the counselor who defends us? It is not, is it not the Holy Spirit who acts as our defense counsel when we are asked very difficult questions in theology and about the ways of God, realizing that we have not been educated in the university or seminary, who talks and silences the people of the world? It is that same Holy Spirit who are you to have taken up the Holy Bible to preach to the people that our Lord Jesus Christ said one thing or the other? Whereas there are great theologians, religious philosophers, professor, professor of religion, and those who travel to the sun and moon and have acquired varied experiences, only one question from them would upset and disarm you always testify about the Holy Spirit what led our Lord Jesus Christ into the temple at Jerusalem when he was 12 years old and he sat in the midst of doctors and and learned lawyers both listening to them and asking them questions which they could not answer the learned men were astonished at his understanding and answer, brethren, if you wish, shout along the street or road, informing people that the Holy Spirit does everything. If you want to inform them by band instrument or tinkling cymbal 
or by drumming. Do it. Whatever you can do to project the image of the Holy Spirit as the central player on the stage that the Holy Spirit has come and that everything on earth and in heaven is attributable to him to enable people to understand and believe. For up to now, people are still doubting, including some of you in Brotherhood. You do not real you do not believe in the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Who has elected all of us into the into this kingdom apart from the Holy Spirit? Who preaches here? Is it not the Holy Spirit? Who is capable of preaching? Do you not know yourself so as to know what to preach to your people? Who moves and preambulates about apart from the Holy Spirit? When you when your car breaks down on your way, who turns into an auto mechanic to service and repair your car? Is it not the Holy Spirit? Who is the driver who drives a car? He is the driver, the passenger, and the conductor. When you, when your tank is completely exhausted of fuel, who supplies you with fuel? It is the Holy Spirit who supplies you. When you drive to a police checkpoint, who instructs the police to let you pass? It is the Holy Spirit. When you are completely bankrupt and cobalt and you start to lament who will help you and somebody immediately gives you money it is it not the holy spirit who gives you the money who guards and protects your house is it not the holy spirit he feeds he caters for he looks after and protects everything in your home now that you have been so rejuvenated who is responsible for it is it not the Holy Spirit? You have never studied in the university. You have never been trained in any seminary. You have never been a member of any church. But when the bishops, learned men, and senior church dignitaries surround you and bombard you with questions, and for every question you have a ready-made answer to the extent that you outwit them and their wisdom is confounded but when you ask them they are unable to find an answer and so they fall on the ground who is instrumental to this is it not the holy spirit you have never had the training as the tradesman, whether as a painter or a carpenter, but if you take up either of these trades, you will be so versed in the trade that you become an expert. Who is attributable to this? It is the Holy Spirit. You have never been an engineer, but you have gained expertise in, in, in any aspect of engineering work. When you handle any engine or machine, you quickly dismantle and cannibalize it and it and fix it all the parts back. Who has taught you all these? Is it not the Holy Spirit? He has taught you everything. Why do you not glorify the Father and magnify his precious name? Very shortly. There will be no need to go into the university because the Holy Spirit teaches everything. He will teach you how to manufacture the aeroplane, the electric bulb. You will sit down and collect certain metal and then add one to one as the case may be. And you can manufacture an aeroplane or the motor car or an ocean going steamer. To confirm what is said that when he will come he will teach you everything he is the chancellor he is the vice chancellor the professor the dean of the faculty 
and the head of all the departments in the whole world. As he comes to teach you, he comes not to specialize in one discipline, but since he is the omniscient, he is a master of all disciplines, and so can teach you everything. He will teach you the, physio the physiognomy, the, the physiology of the human body. He will teach you the circulation of blood. He will teach you the topography of the earth and the contours of the land. Since he is prepared to teach you everything, our only duty is to listen to the Holy Spirit. We should listen to him attentively and do what he directs. Are you not surprised that when you consult a medical doctor to cure your illness, he certifies that you are not sick and that he has not found any abnormality in you and yet you are dying? You pass from one doctor to the other and, and all of them give the same diagnostic that there is no abnormality in you. The irony of faith is that the Holy Spirit looks at you, reveals to you and diagnoses what is wrong with your bone or blood system because he searches the arts and reigns. You have never been a doctor, neither have you been a nurse or a midwife or a paramedical staff, but yet a sick person is brought to you and the Holy Spirit diagnoses the causes of the sickness and cures it. Why should you not glorify the Holy Spirit? Today it is very common that when a pregnant woman on the labor goes to have her child delivered in the hospital and the doctor certifies that the woman can only deliver the child by caesarean operation delivery, otherwise the woman would die. But the woman has come into brotherhood of, of the cross and star and the Holy Spirit delivers the woman of her child without any complaints. Both mother and child doing fine. Go out and testify to people. The only thing you have to do is to listen to the Spirit always. A great many spiritual midwives in brotherhood do not disclose what they see and hear because they feel that the talent is their bona fide property and hide it in order to charge the women on the labor. But here you are well aware that the Holy Spirit teaches you the methodology of doing everything he teaches, he practices and shows you exactly what you have to do. It does not serve any useful purpose for anyone to study farming, commerce or accountancy. The Holy Spirit is the chief accountant. He will teach you contract work, how to run any business. He will teach you various disciplines. He will teach you all the languages of the world free of charge. Because as a linguist, there is no language he does not speak. In matters of life policy, the Holy Spirit teaches you how to manage your day-to-day -day life. If you left Nigeria to study in Britain, the Holy Spirit will socialize you with the mode of life there and cause you to become acclimatized in the area. This is what has perplexed the inhabitants of the world. You always claim to have been trained somewhere. Where were you trained? Because the whole is because with the Holy Spirit, even the small child can address a large crowd of people to the amazement of the audience. When he stands before the audience, he will not suffer from stage fright because his imposing personality has infused confidence in him and so 
with all amount of boldness speaks the words will peace into the bones thus giving them life what has he not taught you he teaches you policy making management administration and every bit of thing there is no knowledge that he has not imparted to you he teaches you about heaven and earth and the fullness thereof whosoever is not taught by the holy spirit cannot know anything why the inhabitants of the world have failed in business and other fields of endeavor is that they do not listen to the spirit of god nor do they allow him to teach them i have merely mentioned all these in passing but i have to emphasize that our duty is to let people know that all what transpires in the world are indications of the era of the Holy Spirit. Do not complain that you have no, re no relations or that you have no wisdom or money or husband because he is over sufficient for you he is the husband to the widows he is the father to all the orphans the poor and helpless he is a brother to the brotherless he is a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless a friend to the friendless he is the millionaire who bestows money unto the poor he is the surgeon who conducts a surgical operation on you he is everything to every person you can travel to a place you cannot trace your way again and at the moment of your despair he appears and leads you gently home i have already told you that the holy spirit is water he is fish, he is animal, he is a bird, he is human, he is a stone, an iron, money, he is everything. We therefore have a good reason to rejoice, sing his praises and magnify his name because we are saved. Why our Lord Jesus Christ testified about him that the Father should send the Comforter is because he had never requested for anything evil and so realized that he was the only person who could do everything since he was the savior and redeemer knowing him as the counselor or everything he was sure that when he came he would lead us to the wisdom of truth our second lesson will now be ready.